Hello, welcome. I'm Pauline from PQW and I'm delighted you're able to join me with this video. I really want to talk to you about how we're going to make making a binding for the edge of your quilt really, really easy when you put a piping or a flange, as you might like to call it, or as we call it in Australia, a peeper strip around the edge of your binding. So let's look at this quilt here. You can see we've got the lovely pink as the binding, but we've put this gorgeous tealy colour as the little trim. This is what we call a peeper strip. And it just adds a nice professional finish to the edge of your quilt. It's very, very easy. We don't even hand stitch it down, we machine stitch it down. And you can see on this lovely quilt, we've got the tiny little flange around the edge here. So the grey is the normal binding and then we've got this tiny little strip running across the edge. So there's different ways we can do it, but let me just show you how I would make a normal binding to start with. Now you may already know about our Sasha tools. These are tools that I designed many years ago for folding fabric for any purpose. Now if I cut my binding strips, a normal binding for a regular quilt, if I cut my binding strips two and a half inches, I would put it through, fold the fabric in half, use the one and a quarter inch tool. If I cut my binding two and a quarter inches wide, I'd use the one and one eighth inch tool. Now you can buy our tools in, in diff different varieties of packaging. These yellow ones, um, you can buy them singly. There's, I think, 18 different sizes we have now, ranging from an eighth of an inch right up to four and a half inches. You can buy them individually, or you can buy the pack of 10, which have um, all the most common sizes in them. So, you know, that's your choice if you buy the green ones. The orange ones, I designed these up for those that just want to buy them for binding. So this is the one and one eighth and one and a quarter, which would be the two regular sizes that we would do our bindings. Then I've designed up the magic binding tool. Now this one is for doing your binding with the nice little peeper strip around the edge. So they all vary in lengths. As you can see here, the split is wider. So that width of that split determines the width that you cut your fabric to start with. Now, a lot of people say, why can't I, if I own this one and a quarter inch one, why can't I use it to do my magic binding with the flange? Well, the difference is that the split on the red one has to be a little bit bigger than on the fluoro yellow one because we're adding that tiny little bit of piping around the edge. So this one doesn't work for you to do the magic binding. This one is the one that you need for that. So let's start by just simply doing a, a normal binding for those that don't know about the, the Sasha tools. So here we have our strip of fabric cut two and a half inches wide. We normally fold it in half and we stand at the ironing board and we press all the way along, which you can burn your fingers and it takes time. So if we're using the tool, we just fold it and we press about the first two inches. That keeps the edges level. We hold the tool by the handle. We come up from the bottom and back down. And that's what it's going to look like. So now we're going to pin that end into our ironing surface. So we'd normally be on our regular ironing board and I'd pin it one end of the ironing board. Pop your pin in. Now all you have to do is fold your edges so they're level and just keep some tension on the fabric. This curve here is designed to fit the side of any iron. Now the tool will not melt. So long as you buy the genuine Sasha tools designed by PQW, there's others out there, other people are copying them, but we know that they melt. We can guarantee our won't, ours won't melt for you. So now all we do is keep pushing and folding and that will do your binding in half for you. Absolutely perfect. If you go off skew a bit, just go back, push the tool back and realign. So that's how simple it is. You can iron up a binding for to go around a big queen size quilt in no time at all. Now, when we join our bindings, like because we normally have to join lots of strips together to um, make one big long strip to bind the quilt, I want to introduce you to my duo tool. Now, I'm not showing how to use this tool in this video, but it, we do have um, a video on our YouTube channel, so please look at how to do your bindings with the duo tool. 
it will explain exactly how to use this to cut out your strips, how to join your strips together so you get a perfect 45 um, degree angle join. And this ruler is amazing when you go to join your ends together at the end of the binding. So have a look at the Duo tool on our YouTube channel and teach yourself how to use this to do every step of your binding. Now I want to show you a couple of different ways to make your binding with that little paper strip down the side. Now sometimes we might only want to do a single fold binding. So I'm going to do a single fold binding with the little paper. So I'm going to start out with an inch wide strip of fabric. So you'd work out how many strips you want, you would cut the 45 degree angle, you join them all together so it's one long piece. We're going to fold it in half and press the first couple of inches like we did before. We're now going to use the half inch tool. We're going to go up and over. Oops, can't get it through the hole. There we go. We're going to pin into the ironing board as we did before and we're just going to push the tool with the iron once again. By putting tension on the fabric it will fold it over for you and you just push with the iron. That will fold that strip in half perfectly for you. You don't have to touch it and burn your fingers. So just keep moving down, get the whole strip done. Then you'll cut a strip of fabric an inch and a quarter wide. So this is going to be my binding, inch and a quarter wide. You will get your folded strip and you will sew that down one side of your inch and a quarter strip. So we'll sew this down with our quarter inch seam all the way through, just with the regular stitch length. So we have it all stitched together. So it's very hard for you to see the stitching line, but we have used a quarter inch seam, stitch that together. Just get rid of that little crease. It is a nice idea to go along and press your stitching line to set the threads into the fabric so the threads don't stretch. Then we're going to fold this little paper strip out so it's facing out. Now this now still measures an inch and a quarter so we'll use the regular inch and a quarter yellow tool or if you have the orange one that's an inch and a quarter. You'll put it up and over through here. We'll pin into the ironing board and I'm using the double fork pin. I don't know if you can see that pin. But this is a twin pin and I always use it when I'm making my bindings because I want one side of the pin to go into my little paper strip and one into the binding. I find if I use two separate pins because I pin them in separately I get different tension on the fabrics and one fabric can stretch more than the other. Now I'm just going to fold this to the back just holding my finger underneath it. Once again I put the iron against it and I push with the iron. Now what that's doing is it's pushing my little flange out to the edge and giving me a perfect, perfect even open seam here. So there's no little puckers in here and we just keep working through till we get that whole strip done. So it's very, very simple, easy process. Nothing hard about it. So remember this strip was cut an inch and a half. This strip was cut one inch and it was folded in half and put through the half inch tool. It measures an inch and a quarter so it works perfectly through the inch and a quarter tool. So now once we get that on we then sew it onto our quilt. So this would be the right side of my quilt. This is the top of my quilt. I sew the binding onto the back just sew it on with your quarter inch seam the way you normally do. But as I said, watch my video on using the duo tool so you know how to join the ends. We roll it over to the front and we use the Roxanne glue basted. So here's my stitching line where I've stitched my binding on. And we just glue along the line. Roll your binding over till it touches that stitching line. Now you corners will mitre perfect for you. Just like doing a normal corner, they'll just fold over beautifully for you. Roll it over to the front, heat set that glue with the iron, 
then we go to our machine and we then stitch right in that ditch by machine all the way around just do it all the way around and then your bindings on your quilt so that is a single fold binding that's not two layers of binding here it's only one layer so that's one way of doing it but let me show you another way because it can get really simple and making a binding like this a single fold binding works perfectly well and is okay to do particularly if you're running short of fabric a lot of times we don't have enough fabric to cut all our strips two and a half inches wide this one we're only cutting them one and a half, one and a quarter inches wide, so it, it saves on fabric, but it it doesn't give you that double fold on the edge of your quilt, which will wear out quicker than a double fold binding. So now to do our magic binding, we're going to cut two strips of fabric. So what do you want your contrast colour to be, which will be your little piping bit? You will cut it one and three quarters so your strongest color will be cut one and three quarters and then your um, binding fabric will be cut one and a half so here we have a one and three quarter inch strip and a one and a half inch strip and we've sewn that all the way through with a quarter inch seam simple easy you'll join all your strips together as you normally would um, like for your feature fabric you would join all those strips together to give you enough to go all the way around the quilt you join all of your binding fabric together to give you enough to go all the way around the quilt and then you'll join that with your quarter inch seam it is a little bit more sewing but it's so well worth it so once again we'll set the seam set the thread so it doesn't stretch just run your iron along it then we're going to fold this over and we want the seam going to our widest strip. So we're going to press our seam. So we just pull this out. And all I'm going to do is press about the first two inches just to sit that part flat. Then we're going to fold this over so the edges meet. Just press about the first two inches. You can see my little paper strip there now. Might be hard to see, but it's a tiny, tiny, tiny little strip. So that now, that width now goes through our magic binding tool because remember this is just a little bit wider than our inch and a quarter. We had to allow for this little bit here. So we're going to go up, it fits in the tool perfect, and back down. And like I think you'll be delighted doing a binding like this, it just works so well. Now we're going to pin that into the ironing board once again. We're going to, all we need to do now is make sure that these two edges are level. You don't want them to go like this because your paper strip won't be even. You just need to keep those two edges level, put a little bit of tension on the fabric and push with the iron. And the tool just moves across there amazingly beautiful. There's your little paper strip. So we'll just come back down, reposition the pin. The pin just keeps the fabric tension for you so it doesn't walk around on the ironing board. So once again, if you start pressing at one end of the ironing board, you can just work on through. And it's just perfect. It comes out absolutely perfect. We're delighted with the way these tools work um, and saves any of us burning our fingers. So there's your little binding with your little paper strip. There's your other side. There's this side. So once again, we're going to stitch it onto the wrong side of the quilt. So the purple area is up to me. We do our corners exactly the same as what we normally do them. We're going to fold it over to the front. And once again, we put the little dots of glue all along the stitching line. Like I prefer to glue it. I find if I pin or clip at this stage, it can distort that tiny little, little strip that we've put on there. And a little hint is you need where these two are joined together, that's, that's your stitching line where you should line up with your stitching line where you've stitched your binding on. That way when you stitch in that ditch of that little paper strip, on the back it's going to be sewing right in this seam here. So nobody will know that you've hand stitched that down. 
when we get to the corners, if you have difficulty turning this corner, put your glue out on an angle. Use something like the Taylor's Tapers Taylor's Awl. Hold it on an angle and fold over and then we just press with the iron. And then you have got that absolutely perfect, perfect, perfect mitre. So it's really lovely the way this all works and you just get that real professional look without doing a lot of extra work. The only thing you're doing is doing this extra row of stitching when you join these two pieces of fabric together. So that's my favourite way at the moment of doing a binding. So I get this really nice finish on my quilts and I love it. It just works beautifully. This is a quilt as you go quilt. When I made the sashing here, I put the little peeper strip out on either side of the sashing, but that's a whole new lesson. So stay tuned because we'll show you one day how to do that. But remember, this is a very, very handy tool. The Duo tool is a great tool for um, joining your binding ends. You can um, purchase different combinations of tools off us. You can buy the, the um, binding set, which is the orange ones. If you just want to do one and a, um, if you cut your bindings two and a quarter or two and a half, these would work for you. You may already have the set of the 10 of our sashes. You could use those, but if you want to do the the binding like I've just showed you with that tiny little flange you would need the magic binding tool so that's the one for it they're not all the same size so don't expect one tool will do everything for you I wish they could but that's not going to be the case so subscribe to our YouTube channel because we'd love to share all of our secrets and information that I've gathered together over all my years of quilting and I have lots of hints and tips because it's got to be easy for me. So I want to share how to make it easy for yourself. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Press that bell so that you get a, a notification when we put a new video out. And also go to our website. Have a look around. It's www.pqw.com.au. And subscribe to our newsletter because we'd love to be able to share anything with you. So till next time, happy stitching.